Today we cover rule number 15 of the rules of the road and rule number 15 talks about a crossing situation. Now although this rule is pretty short and it has only about a paragraph uh, that clearly mentions uh, what this rule is all about, uh, we have a fair bit to talk about this rule just like uh, rule 5 lookout. Alright, so you have to understand this rule very well, understand each and every word and uh, what each of these phrases mean to get a good understanding to answer your questions asked to you in the orals exam as well as practical application at sea. So what I have done is I have written down the rule itself on the right side of your screen and because this rule is about crossing situation, I have shown you what a crossing situation at sea looks like. I have also labeled out uh, what is a giveaway vessel and what is a stand on vessel in a crossing situation. However, we have covered the action required by giveaway vessel and stand on vessel in my previous videos. I will provide you the links with those videos as well. So remember here this is a crossing situation and uh, normally encounters between two vessels are of three types at sea. Either you are on crossing situation or you are on head on situation or you might be overtaking a vessel. So rule 15 basically focuses on a crossing situation between two power driven vessels. So it does not apply to power driven vessels which are restricted in their ability to maneuver, engaged in fishing or not under command. You also have to make a note that towing vessels with their toes are also considered to be ordinary power driven vessels unless they are severely restricted in their ability to deviate from the courses. Now this is something that we also covered when we were practicing our rules of the road cards. So when a rule of the road card is shown to you and uh, a power driven vessel towing operation is shown to you, make sure that you mention this. Uh, you cannot always consider the power driven vessel to be a, uh, restricted in the ability to maneuver. They are not, especially if they are engaged in towing operation and they are, there is no complication with that. So this rule applies to vessels in visual sight of one another. It doesn't matter whether uh, your radar screen shows perfectly clearly the approach of another vessel in a crossing situation if you don't see the other vessel. So you have to see this vessel for this rule to be applied. So again uh, with the other rules uh, uh, in this section that uh, covers crossing situation. Crossing situation is covered under section 2 of rules of the road which applies uh, only until the risk of collision exists. So this rule applies only when the risk of collision exists. Alright, so these provisions apply to small power driven, so power driven vessels uh, which are engaged in kind of a crossing situation. Alright, so if you are operating a large vessel and you are in a narrow channel or a narrow fairway or traffic lane and you encounter, encounter a crossing smaller vessel involving risk of collision, you must obey this rule even though the smaller vessel is required to stay well out of your way. Because of the possible shift in responsibilities, you should resolve any doubts early by using your VHF radios and failing that you may sound the signal of five or more short blasts which indicate that your vessel is in doubt. So rule 15 requires the vessel that has the other on its starboard side to stay out of the way and to pass behind it. So in this case, the vessel on the right that you see is the red vessel becomes the stand on vessel. And that stand on vessel must follow the rule 17, which is action by stand on vessel. And the blue vessel that you see on your screen is the giveaway vessel, which has the other vessel on the right, of course. This is a stand on vessel and it has to follow rule 16, which is the action by giveaway vessel. And we have got both these rules in my previous videos. So a vessel approaching from the quarter so that it could not see a side light would be an overtaking vessel and has to follow the appropriate rule number 13 for overtaking. All right. A vessel which will see both the side lights would be meeting head on to the other vessel and would have to follow rule number 14 which talks about head on vessels. So you have to see, so any situation which is uh, offered to you whether in the orals exam or in the actual situation at sea, you must think clearly as to what is this situation. Is this a crossing situation? Is it overtaking or is it a head on situation? Only when you're clear about the situation can you then apply the rule. If you are confused about the situation, you cannot apply the rule. So make sure that you are very clear when a risk of collision exists with the other vessel, whether it's a overtaking situation, head on situation or a crossing situation. All right, because tomorrow, if something happens, let's see if you have an accident, if there's a collision, then tomorrow in the court of law, you would have to prove, you have to justify your action and you can justify your action only if you can justify the situation you were in. All right, after that, if something goes wrong, of course, it may be the fault of the other vessel, you can at least protect yourself legally. 
So in this case, you can see the giveaway vessel is required to pass behind the stand on vessel. And so the ideal action for the blue vessel or the giveaway vessel will be to make a broad, broad alteration to starboard to make it very well clear to the stand on vessel that it's taking action and also to pass a stern of it. So to keep the area to the left of the stand on vessel clear for the giveaway vessels maneuvers, uh, rule 17 directs the stand on vessel to maintain its course and speed and also not to uh, turn towards port and complicate the situation. Now there are few situations uh, where application of the crossing rule is not straightforward. Now vessels following a say a winding river or a channel may approach each other in what may appear to be like a crossing situation. However, they have to follow rule number nine for narrow channels and then stay to the far right of the channel, which how which is dictated by the rule line. Rule 15 also does not apply in such cases. And in other cases where the apparently stand on vessel cannot or does not hold a steady course. So let's say a stopped vessel that sees another power driven vessel approaching on its starboard side and involved in a disc of collision is obligated to get out of the way unless the stopped vessel is not under command or restricted in its ability to maneuver or is engaged in fishing or under any other special circumstances which restrict the vessel from taking action. So that is why it's very important that if you are uh, restricted in ability to maneuver or not under command or ground, you must display the correct lights so that the other vessels can see and identify your situation and then take appropriate action to stay well clear of you. All right. So because some special circumstances may uh, include when a, a stopped large uh, loaded tanker that is physically unable to maneuver out of the way of the fast approaching stand on vessel or if the stopped vessel is maneuvering and uh, not on any course. All right. So sometimes uh, even deep draft vessels cannot go out of the channels. It's so deep draft it can only operate in a certain channel. So there of course the narrow channel rules comes in as well. So officers on watch show or on stopped vessels that cannot readily maneuver should exhibit the lights and ships as I told you for showing that it's a hampered vessel it cannot take action and you should also contact the other vessel by the VHF and warn them of your situation. All right so it's a pretty straightforward rule rule 15 basically talks about a crossing situation and broadly uh, uh, dictates the responsibilities of the giveaway vessel and stand on vessel. Uh, I think rule number 15 goes into more detail in rule number 16 and 17 and that in combination you should understand all these three rules uh, to answer the questions in the oral exam as well as for practical application at sea. All right. If there was some point in the rule that it was not very clear to you, make sure you write to me. If you like these videos, uh, just put a thumbs up on the video and comment. Anything is fine. Uh, and I will see you soon with my next video, guys. Uh, all the best. Study hard. Uh, I don't only recommend watching my videos, but watch as many videos as you can. Learn as much as you can. Uh, this is required of you. This is expected from you as officers at sea. All right. So all the best with your studies, guys. Work hard, study hard, and let me know if you want me to cover any special topics. I'll try my best to do so. Bye.